we are talking the Christmas themed B movie horror, Sleigh Bells. This one directed and co written by Dan Walker. Now, the story here focuses on three young female YouTubers, and these girls call themselves the Adventure Girls. And what they do is they go around different kind of dilapidated old places that do basically urban exploring and kind of have this apparently popular YouTube channel. And on one Christmas, this particular Christmas, they decide to go into this Santa Land, which is a theme park, a theme park which has got a Christmas kind of uh, uh, setting with lots of kind of like rides and attractions, all to do with Christmas. And it's been derelict for 20 years or so they think. However, when they go there, that they find this actual park isn't uh, completely uninhabited. In fact, Santa himself lives there and he's been kind of crashing out there uh, for the last 20 or so years. But also Krampus, they're right, that Christmas devil, he's back again in another movie and he's there as well, cutting a sway through the local populace and may have a dastardly plan himself. So what do we think about sleigh bells? Um, first thing, let's talk about the positives first of all. Um, I thought it, it has a neat idea with the casting, a little bit out of the box casting here, which I think maybe is a good idea. So you may recognise uh, Barry Boswick, um, he's the kind of the headline actor, but you've also got Richard Mole, so a couple of kind of recognisable names there. But they've also, with these three girls, they've also cast a couple of uh, people from different fields as well. So you have um, Suzanne Slaughter, who to be honest with you I've never heard of. Um, but she does like a uh, apparently some type of most haunted style kind of um, documentary. I'm assuming in America, but there you go. Uh, and also you have this um, Hannah Wagner, who is better known as a YouTuber called Mistress Hannah Jinx. And there she is a kind of a, uh, a sort of geek slash horror related kind of YouTube personality. Again, I'd be honest with you, I've never heard of her prior to this, but... Um, I had a quick look at her channel, doesn't like she's posted much recently to be honest, but there you go. Uh, so there you have it, so it, obviously it's kind of casting a wide net into um, different types of casting. I think it's probably a good idea, I mean we've seen, YouTube has seemed to be coming up in a variety of horror horror properties now, but it's nice to see someone other than Cool Dude in one of these. Anyway, so I, I kind of like the idea of casting that. And I have to say, those three girls, I really enjoyed their chemistry. Uh, because they do seem have, to have a kind of a natural kind of friendship going on almost. Uh, and they get on really well. And the kind of the, the, the banter, so to speak, between them seems quite genuine, actually. And seems, it's kind of nice to see um, girls have this kind of like showy camaraderie that we often see with kind of male characters. Uh, but we don't so much see in the female characters. They always tend to be a bit more straight, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of nice to see like girls get a little bit more kind of wild and crazy. Think sort of bridesmaids is what I'm talking about. So I kind of like that. Um, the actual Krampus costume itself, it's just a man in a suit, but I actually quite dug the design, I've got to say. And that's actually, if you look at the kind of the, um, it's actually quite based on the, like, the old German designs uh, that you'll see in kind of old like, you know, illustrations and stuff. It's actually quite faithful to that, far more though, more so than kind of a lot of these other kind of Krampus movies. So I quite like the, uh, the actual design of the actual Krampus um, itself. I actually, I also thought the Santa Claus was kind of it's portrayed in a kind of funny way. And there are a few kind of funny moments here, and the movie overall has its tongue in cheek, and it has this kind of like fun vibe going throughout the movie. Um, so what doesn't work? Okay, so I, I mean, I call this a Christmas horror film, but it's really a Christmas B movie because there's not a lot of horror here. There's a couple of kind of uh, of kill scenes, but nothing too gratuitous. And the horror is actually kept down to a, a minimum. There's a little bit of kind of uh, uh, nudity in it, but not not a whole lot. Um, so don't even be expecting anything too kind of like uh, graphic or explicit on this one because it's not going to be in this. Um, although I kind of quite like the kind of the uh, the chemistry between our three three, three lead actresses, you know. I don't know, sometimes the acting was a little rubbish. There's, there's quite a large number of peripheral characters that we see in this movie. And I've got to say, some of the acting was very hokey. And it's a hokey B movie, so, you know, you might not bother about it. It might not bother you. But nonetheless, um, there's a lot of time spent on 
tertiary characters. Uh, the, the the police station, for example, where you see the receptionist and a couple of different kind of police, and there and kind of you know Pert that gets brought in, etc. And they actually have very little to do with the actual plot. So I wonder if they're kind of uh, reshoots, maybe to fill out the running time a little bit. But um, but they don't. It, just, it seems unnecessary, and I've got to say the acting isn't isn't fantastic. And obviously it's not a serious film, but sometimes the tone is a little bit kind of all over the place uh, as well. <clears throat> but now for my biggest criticism with this movie, this has seriously bad cinematography, camera work and editing and lighting. So there's some real issues with the technical side of stuff here. So what do I mean? Now there's a, there's, there are a few instances where the movie kind of switches into kind of like a uh, found footage sort of style with a videoing it and all that. And I'm not talking about that. But there's, there's some really horrible camera work here with things being out of frame. And we're not talking the found footage scenes either. Just kind of like um, very, a very kind of qu quick uh, edits um, that you just... Um, there's that joke where we see that, 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 that Taken sequel where Liam Neeson's climbing the fence. And it's got something like 40 takes with this one kind of scene where he's climbing the, in the fence. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it reminds me of that. Loads of like quick editing, poor choices of editing, horrible kind of placement of the camera, uh, and just overall very, very poor camera work. It's underlit a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, it kind of takes place at night for a good portion of the movie, but, you know, we've got to find a way to kind of light, light scenes to be able so the audience can see in certain times. I mean, it's... You know, there's there's a whole lot of kind of technical issues here where I feel it just kind of like ultimately falls apart. But I maybe if we can give the lighting side of it, but the the camera work is so poor and the editing is is, is so so poor. Um, and I've got to say the movie lags. It, it really lags in this kind of in the middle section to the second act, I suppose. I mean, uh, we, the first act obviously you're getting to know the, the girls, you're getting to know the characters and stuff like that, and we introduced to. Krampus and Santa, that's all good. Then obviously the final act, we have the kind of the big reveal. And there is a reveal, and I quite, quite like that. I did like the kind of the twist, so to speak. Um, and there's kind of a bit more of the kind of the action going on. But man, that second act really drags, because not a lot happens. In fact, virtually nothing happens. Um, so I do feel this movie has a, a, a good sense of fun. Uh, and, it's, and I quite like our, our three kind of like protagonists. And Santa is fun, although, you know, uh, it's a fairly easy role, I suppose. Um, and they kind of cut the Krampus suit, although it is a little cheap looking, don't get me wrong. But there is some seriously bad issues with the, with the technical side of this stuff and the, uh, and, and the camera work. Um, and then the directing, I suppose, that goes along with that. Um, so that, that had a real problem for me. And there's and there a couple of other, other bits in here, but a few bits of, you know, crappy kind of acting, some rubbish dialogue, unnecessary scenes, unnecessary characters. I've got to say, um, I'll give this one a 5 out of 10. So if you're just a B-movie fan, I feel there's a, a lot to enjoy in regards to some of this kind of cheesiness. And uh, you may kind of get a kick out of seeing some uh, some people from other kind of like corners of the uh, entertainment industry doing some acting and stuff like that. But... I got a feeling the, the poor technical side of this will annoy a lot of people. Um, so maybe not for general audiences, I would say, just for kind of B-movie fanatics. So 5 out of 10, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Just leave me a comment and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.